Hello, I'm Dallas Johnson, lead instructor of the Automobile Dealer Training Association. And first of all, I would like to thank you for choosing the Automobile Dealer Training Association as your dealer license training partner. I also want to congratulate you on your decision to start this incredible business. What we're going to do is take you through the entire startup process. I'm going to show you how to properly apply for your license, and I'm also going to show you how to run your business. And at the end of this course, you are going to be very confident, not only in the process of obtaining your license, but also I'm going to do my very best to show you how to maintain compliance with your dealership once you've achieved your license. So in this course, I want you to be aware that attendees are not required to buy any products or services in conjunction with this seminar. So throughout this course, it has several units. And in unit one, we're going to cover how to get licensed. And I'm going to show you how to properly complete a Georgia dealer license application. In unit two, we'll cover ETR, TOPS, the legal use of dealer license plates. In unit three, we'll cover your title ad valorem tax. That's your TAVT. In unit four, we'll go over dealer records, odometer disclosure, advertising laws for dealers will be covered as well. In Unit 5, we'll cover the importance of ethics and integrity in the operation of any Georgia dealership. We'll also talk about dealer license suspensions. In Unit 6, we'll go into financing. In Unit 7, we'll cover federal laws that come out of Washington. In Unit 8, we've got a dealer checklist. It's got uh, also the deal, which shows you all the documents that you'll fill out on every transaction. And also the entire PowerPoint presentation is going to be in that manual that you get at your class as well. First, I want to get started with some really great contact information for Georgia dealers. Georgia dealers are regulated not only by the state of Georgia, but also by the Georgia State Board of Registration of Used Motor Vehicle Dealers. And you can see their contact information right here. They're located at 237 Coliseum Drive, Macon, Georgia, 31217. Their website is www.sos.ga.plb.usedcar. And we will cover the roles and responsibilities of the board, uh, which is what I'll refer to them throughout this course. So we'll go into depth so you'll understand exactly how the board operates and how they do have oversight over every dealer in the state. If you have any questions regarding dealer licensing, you can call 844-753-7825, or you can drop an email to business.registration at dor.ga.gov. So you can have contact them if you have questions about how to obtain your license, or maybe you have questions after you've just gotten your license, or maybe you've been a licensed dealer for many, many years. You do have unlimited resources with the state. So I always advise using these resources. You never want to wing it. You know, if you have a question, you have contact information, you should certainly use it. And as I always want you to be aware, especially in this industry, there really is no such thing as a stupid question. The only step, stupid question is the question that you did not ask. So definitely use these resources. Not only is this a great business to start at any time in your life, this is a great first business. Because if you think about this, what other business can you start where you have unlimited resources and technical support from a state agency? So definitely use these resources. So in unit one of your dealer course, we're going to cover the different types of dealer licenses. And then I'm going to show you the steps that you need to complete before you apply for your license. And then we're actually going to complete all the documents to apply for your dealer license so they're completed correctly. I want to cover with you the steps that you need to complete to obtain your Georgia used motor vehicle dealer license. Maybe you've already completed some of these steps or maybe you're starting right here as your first step. And no matter what, I'm going to do my very best to steer you in the right direction so you can obtain your dealer license as soon as possible so you can start your business as soon as possible and hopefully get you making some money as soon as possible. In order to obtain a Georgia dealer's license, you're going to need to complete a dealer application. You need to have a building with a sign and a display lot in most cases. You're going to need to submit photographs. You'll need to submit an original certificate of insurance. You need to submit a dealer surety bond. You're going to have to get a federal employer identification number. You have to get a state sales tax number. Most dealers will either register with the Secretary of State. Some dealers will register instead with their county. But you're also going to have to get a business license with your city or your county. You have to take your four-hour dealer pre-license educational seminar. You're going to have to have a fingerprint-based background check. 
and a final lot inspection. Now, this seems like a lot of steps. Some of these steps can be completed in a few moments online, and then some of them are more extensive. But you have to complete these steps before you apply for your license. If you, if you fail to complete any steps, you will not get your dealer's license. So this list is going to be in your manual that you get in your class or you got in your class, uh, but you have to complete all these steps and then you apply for your dealer's license. Okay, skipping any step, you will not get your license. So let's go into these steps in depth, okay? One of the steps is to complete a dealer application. In order to obtain a Georgia dealer's license, you must submit a dealer license application. That's pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory, obviously. The application is quite extensive and must be completed correctly and in its entirety. Mistakes on your dealer license application can cause significant delays in your licensing approval. If you need assistance during the application process, you can call 844-753-7825 or you can email business.registration at dor.ga.gov. We'll complete a dealer license application later on in your dealer training course and you will have a copy of that in your manual in your class uh, that you're considering taking or possibly have already taken. You also need a business building. You've got to have a place of business to be used for the purpose of selling motor vehicles. The building must meet all local zoning requirements. You must have an office area in the building that is for the operation of your dealership. Before you rent or purchase a building to operate, your dealership, you, you must contact your local planning and zoning office, either at your city hall or your county courthouse to ensure that you may operate a dealership at that location. When you submit your dealer license application, you will include what's called a zoning verification, and that has to be signed by your local zoning authority. And I'm going to show you that form here in just a little bit. Records are be required by law to be stored at the business building. You know, the board will allow a modular or manufactured office building that's tied down and on blocks with the wheels removed. The board will not allow like a storage building or similar or similar movable structures that are clearly manufactured or constructed for purposes that are unrelated to the office. So, like I said, you really need to make sure that you are uh, using a location that is zoned correctly because I know scenarios where a person potentially that was going to get their dealer's license rented or purchased a building, assuming they could have their dealership there, only to have the city or county tell them that that building is not in a properly zoned location. So you definitely need to make sure that you are properly zoned, okay? Now, modular or manufactured buildings are allowed if they're tied down and they do have the wheels removed, as I stated. Just remember, you can never use a storage building or a movable structure, and uh, just always do please keep that in mind. Now, it is allowed to have a dealer's license at a residence if all zoning has been met. So let's talk about this. If the business building you're using is located at a private residence, it must be completely separate from the actual residence. I want to repeat that very important statement. If the business building that you're using for your dealer's license is located at a private residence, it must be a completely separate structure from the actual residence and must meet the zoning requirements for that city or the county as well. Your office must include office furnishings and a file cabinet to store records. If a dealer shares their location with another business, the dealer must have their own office area. A used motor vehicle broker may operate out of an office suite in an office complex, provided that the facility meets all rules, guidelines, and zoning requirements as well. At minimum, the sign would have to be at the entrance to the building in a publicly displayed marquee in the lobby of the building, that lists all the businesses and directly outside the entrance to the office of the dealer as well. I'm going to state this several times during the course because this is a very important law regarding the operation of your dealership. Licenses must be displayed prominently in your building. Okay, so your dealer's license, your sales tax license, and your local business license must be displayed. If either or any of these licenses are not displayed, you're in violation of the law. So we'll talk about that throughout the course because your dealer's license, your sales tax license, and your local business license must be displayed prominently in your business building. Now, the business building that you're using must also have installed, and you must always maintain, a working landline telephone whose number must be listed in the licensee's trade name 
Uh, it's, it's the same, which is listed in the application, and that's the same name that you're using in any advertisements that are going to be made available to the consumers or customers, okay? The telephone of the dealer cannot be shared with another business. And I want you to be aware, cell phones and VOIP phones do not meet dealer license phone requirements. So you can't have a cell phone or voice over internet protocol phone. You must have a landline in order to have a dealer's license. You're also going to need a display lot in most scenarios. Retail dealers have to have a display lot that has sufficient space to display the vehicle types that you're selling. Those spaces must be reserved exclusively for the retail dealer's inventory and may not be shared or intermingled with another business or public parking area or especially another dealer's display area. A retail dealer must conduct business in a building on the same property as the display lot. If the dealer is a used car broker and does not have a display lot, all the same rules apply with the exception of the display area for vehicles. Only one dealership may operate per lot. Multiple dealers may never share a lot. Multiple dealers may never share inventory as well. You've always got to make sure your inventory is completely separate from any other licensed motor vehicle dealer's inventory as well. I want to talk about a very important component of your new business, and that is that all retail sales activity must take place at the licensed location only. I want to repeat that. All retail sales activity must take place at the licensed location only. Wholesale vehicle dealers are going to be exempt from that display lot requirement as well. Let's talk about your business sign. You will need a permanent business sign, which is visible to consumers from the street. The dealership name on the sign must be at least six inches or larger. At least one sign must be located in position to be clearly visible to consumers from the street. If the telephone number is listed on the sign, it must be the phone number that's listed on the application and any advertisements by the dealer. So, you know, you, you can't just put your cell phone on that phone on that sign. It would have to be the phone number that is officially operating for your dealership. That's the phone number that's on your application. That's the same phone number that's the landline and the number that you would use in your advertisements if you do place that phone number on your sign. By the way, most printing companies can produce a permanent business sign at minimal cost. Just be sure the letters in the dealership name meet the minimum height requirements under Georgia state law. Photographs. You must submit photographs of the business operations. Be sure to submit photographs of the sign, sales rooms, or offices, the display lot. Also, this will validate your established place of business. Do not forget to include your photographs with your dealer license application. Otherwise, this will delay your dealer license approval. Remember, you've got to meet all these steps to get your dealer's license. If you submit one, if you forget one step, say, for example, maybe you forgot to stick your photographs on the envelope in the envelope then you will not get your dealer's license. So you need to make sure and you know take the initiative to get all these steps completed and then you apply for your license and you will become a Georgia used motor vehicle dealer. Insurance. You must obtain insurance before you apply for your dealer license. I want to repeat that important statement. You must obtain insurance before you apply for your dealer license. The state of Georgia requires every motor vehicle driven on every roadway to be insured. You must obtain insurance before you get your license. So there are different types of dealer insurance that I want you to be aware of, okay? There's dealer liability, dealer's open lot, garage keepers, errors and omissions, employment uh, practices liability, workers' compensation as well, okay? So, and there, there are several different types of policies. Dealer liability is basically just like liability on your own vehicle. If your customer wrecks one of your vehicles into another vehicle, then it's going to fix the other vehicle. It won't fix yours because it's dealer liability. Dealer's open lot is like, you would think of this as full coverage, but we don't normally call it full coverage. We call it dealer's open lot. Dealer's open lot does not cover a specific amount of vehicles on your lot. Okay, it's going to cover a dollar amount. Okay, so let's say, for example, you have $50,000 worth of inventory on your lot. You need $50,000 worth of open lot coverage, you know. Garage keepers, if you keep a garage and you repair customers' vehicles, then you need garage keepers. Errors and omissions could help you if you did not fill out your paperwork correctly, like we're going to talk about the Federal Trade Commission rules here in just a little while. If you accidentally violated one of those rules, uh, that could help you. 
employment practices. You want to make sure, you know, that you talk to your insurance agent about employment practices, workers' compensation. False pretense is another type of insurance that I think is very important. It's a very minimal cost insurance. But let's just say, for example, maybe you buy a vehicle from an individual and they sell that to you with a a, a stolen ID or something like that. It covers you because they sold you that vehicle under false pretense. So keep that in mind. But at very bare minimum, you must have a garage liability coverage with a policy number. Okay, so your bare bones minimum is going to be that garage liability coverage. Automobile liability is not acceptable. You have to have what is known as garage liability. Even if you don't have a garage, it's still called garage liability. The location must match the address on the application and the certificate holder must be the Georgia Board of Used Motor Vehicle Dealers. Remember to talk to your insurance agent about this. They're going to ask you who the certificate holder is. You'll need to tell them the certificate holder on your insurance policy will be the Georgia Board of Used Motor Vehicle Dealers. You will need to submit your original insurance, which is called your Accord Form. So the Accord Form does need to be submitted with your dealer license application, and that will show the state that you are currently insured Uh, So you will be able to get your dealer's license, okay? Now, there is a minimum requirement. So when you're talking to your insurance agent, you need to make sure that you get a garage liability policy that has limited liability of not less than $50,000 per person, $100,000 per accident personal insurance liability coverage, and $25,000 property damage liability coverage. Did you get all that? Tell your insurance agency agent that you need a 5125 policy and they'll know, I think they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. So that's the minimum requirements that you see on your screen right there. So definitely, uh, you know, take a note of that. And when you're getting your insurance policy, let your insurance agent know you need a garage liability policy, 5125. And then you're going to submit what's called the Accord form, which is normally the first page of that uh, of that insurance policy. Now, I want you to be aware, there are normally going to be about four factors that will affect the price of your dealer insurance. That's going to be your driving record, horrendous driving record, you're going to pay higher rates. If you got a good driving record, normally you're going to pay lower rates. Dealership ownership experience, uh, you know, if you've never owned a dealer's license, if you've never had a dealer's license before, you are going to pay the highest rates. But when you go without claims, you should see reductions in your policy. So your ownership experience will determine the amount of insurance, your geographic area. The closer you get to a core of a city, the higher the rates tend to be. So, you know, if you're in downtown Atlanta or downtown Savannah or downtown Macon, you're going to pay higher rates than like if you're out in one of the rural areas of the state. And it's also going to be dependent on the number of dealer license plates that you possess. Your insurance company will always want you to give them the number of plates that you have. The lower the number of dealer plates, tend to lead to lower prices of dealer uh, garage liability insurance. Now, where can you get quotes? You can certainly ask your current insurance agent. Uh, I I want you to be aware your current insurance agent is not necessarily going to be the cheapest rates. Okay, I strongly encourage you to get at least a couple of quotes uh, because in my experience, when I call around, you know, you might contact one insurance agent on one side of the street and they might have, say, for example, a policy for $1,200 a year. And the insurance agent right across the street from her gives you a quote for $5,000 for the identical coverage. So you definitely want to check a couple of agents. Maybe ask other dealers, you know, once you get into the, uh, if you're getting into auctions with a friend or something like that. Or you can do an internet search. And here, as you see, I entered Georgia dealer insurance into Google. And by the way, uh, you can use any internet uh a search provider that you want. Google's my favorite, but if you use Bing or Yahoo or something like that, you're probably going to get the same re- results. And you know, you can you're going to find several companies here. So I entered Georgia Dealer Insurance into Google, and you have several companies here that want to earn your business, and you will need to submit proof of your insurance coverage, which is known as your Accord form that must be included with your dealer license application. And we will cover all those documents that you're going to send in with your dealer license application uh, packet later on in the course. I also want you to be aware before we move on, any dealer that does not maintain financial responsibility can face penalties, including possible license suspensions. So if you have a dealer's license, you are required under state law to have that garage liability policy at minimum. Also, you're going to have to get a dealer surety bond. Very simple to do. You must obtain a $35,000 dealer surety bond in order to obtain a Georgia used motor vehicle dealer's license. 
Now, used motor vehicle parts dealers that are not selling motor vehicles can just get a $10,000 dealer surety bond. But if you're going to be selling motor vehicles, which I assume that you're going to be doing, then you're going to need to obtain a $35,000 dealer surety bond. Now, is this going to cost you $35,000? No, it's based on your credit score. Okay, with good credit, you should be spending, I'm just going to give you a rough estimate here. With good credit, you should be spending two to maybe no more than $300 a year for your dealer surety bond. Now, if you do have a couple of blemishes on your credit score, that, that price can go up dramatically, okay? So the name on the dealer surety bond must match exactly the name on the dealer license application and the name that's registered with the Secretary of State for business entities that are gonna be filing with the Secretary of State. The bond may never expire during your dealer license or period. So your bond must remain in effect your entire time that you have a dealer license. Uh, so, it, you know, you are going to be able to purchase a bond from either an insurance company or a, a bonding company. And here, once again, as you see, I went to Google, I entered Georgia dealer surety bond, and there you're going to see several companies that want to earn your business. And you'll easily be able to either find an insurance agent or a bonding company right there. And a lot of these bonding companies or insur an insurance company might be able to sell you your insurance and your bond with one five minute phone call. So you're gonna to have to admit, submit the original signed bond along with the power of attorney with your dealer license application. The next step, employer identification number. Sometimes we call this a federal employment identification number or a federal tax ID number is what it's referred to sometimes, but the official name is an employer identification number. Before submitting your dealer application, you must obtain an employer identification number, okay? And sometimes they call it an EIN or an FEIN, but we'll call it an employer identification number. This is a number that is used to identify the new dealership that you are starting, and it's gonna be needed for tax purposes. Obtaining this number is a very, very quick and easy step, which really only takes just a few minutes, okay? And you're gonna be able to do this with the Internal Revenue Service at their official website, which is irs.gov and you're going to be able to have your you're going to be able to have your employer identification number in just a matter of moments. And I'm going to show you how to do this very quickly and easily and I want you to be aware there are companies out there that will charge you 3 and 400 dollars to do this. Well, I'm going to show you it's literally just a few clicks of the mouse, okay? So, to do this, you're going to jump on the irs.gov website and you're going to scroll right down there where it says apply for an employer identification number. That's your EIN, okay? And then on the next screen at the bottom, you apply for an EIN online, as you see right there. And you can go ahead and read the terms and conditions. And at the bottom there, you simply click Begin Application. Now for this training scenario, I'm just gonna show you how to get your employer identification number. If you're an LLC, that's a limited liability company, this is for training purposes only. I am certainly not recommending that you start your dealership as an LLC because you might wanna be a sole proprietor or a partnership or a corporation, but for this, training scenario, let's just say you're starting your dealership as an LLC. So what we would do in that scenario, you're going to click <clears throat> limited liability company, which is an LLC. Uh, you'll need to put the number of persons that are on your LLC. And obviously you're operating in the state of Georgia. So you select Georgia from the drop down box there. And now right here, the government, the IRS wants to know why, why do you want an EIN? Because most of you are going to be starting a new business. So that's gonna be covering most of you here. So you'll click, say for example, you're starting a new business and then you're gonna click the continue box there. You'll need to need, put one person on the dealer's license's name and along with their social security number. And you'll need to select that you're one of the owners. And like I said, there can be a third party that does this that might charge you several hundred dollars and they would check this box, but this is so simple to do. It really is. I mean, if you wanna get legal advice or have a company do it for you, you can. But if you're the person completing it, you just have to complete that you're one of the owners, select the, I'm one of the owners box there. Then you're gonna click the continue link. And now you're gonna put the dealership address and your uh, phone number as well. And they also give you an opportunity to type in a mail forwarding address if you want your official correspondence mailed to a different address. But normally that's gonna be your dealership address. And now you're gonna put the legal name of your dealership along with what you are doing business as if the DBA is a separate name from your legal name. You'll put the county that your dealership is in and your dealership has to be in Georgia. Now, if you live in Georgia, 
then you'll select Georgia twice. But if your dealership's in Georgia, but maybe you live in another state, then you'll need to select your home state from the second drop down box there. And then you'll put your approximate LLC start date. And I'm going to show you how to file with the Secretary of State here in just a little bit. Okay. So then that's all there is to it. I mean, that's pretty simple. All you have to do now is uh, go ahead and download that. So they do give you a couple of opportunities here. If you check the second box, the IRS will mail you your employer identification number, which can take, as it says right there, up to four weeks. Well, the way I look at it, you just put a four-week hold on your application approval. So I would go ahead and recommend selecting that first uh, uh, box up there, that little circle, and you can just download your employer identification number right there. So that's pretty easy. I think you'll agree. If you would decide to have a company do that, you can certainly do that. But as I showed you, it's literally literally just a few clicks of the mouse. But if you have any questions about your employer identification number, you can call the IRS directly at 800-829-4933, or you can just go to irs.gov and have that employer identification number in just a few moments. And you're going to need this when you apply for your license. Another step is to obtain a Georgia sales tax number. Before you apply for your Georgia dealer's license, you are required to obtain a Georgia sales tax number. You must have this number in order to charge and collect sales tax on the motor vehicles you sell. And I'm going to show you how to do that very easily here in just a little while. You can easily obtain your Georgia sales tax number online at the Georgia Tax Center. And that's going to be gtc.dor.ga.gov. Did you get all that? It's gtc.dor.ga.gov. And this will all be in that manual that you receive in your dealer training course. So I want to show you how to do this. Uh, you know, we, we have to go step by step here to get this accomplished, but it takes just a few moments and you can do it all online. So first, you know, we're going to go to the Georgia Tax Center right here. And, you know, since you have not registered before, you're going to jump right down here towards the bottom and you're going to click register a new Georgia business. And as you see it right there magnified, click on register a new Georgia business. And it basically tells you the types of operations that of a, of a type of business that's going to need that sales tax certificate, which we're going to obtain. You're going to enter your business entity and your federal employment number. Remember, chronologically, you need to have your employment identification number before this. And at the end of the course, I'm going to give you a chronological step-by-step -step guide so you'll know how to do everything in the correct manner once you've completed your training. So if you do it in the correct chronological order, then you'll get your license back a lot sooner. So right here, you got to have your federal employment number first, and then you get your sales tax ID. You're going to put your legal business name, once again, what you're doing business as, and this can be the same. You're going to put your business location address here, and then they'll do a quick uh, verification for you. And for the purposes of having a dealership, you're going to get what's called a sales and use tax, okay? So to have a dealer's license, you have to obtain a sales and use tax. So click that little box right there. And they want the approximate date that you'll be collecting motor vehicle sales tax. And, uh, you know, so you might put it a couple of weeks later from whenever you're doing this. They want to know if you're a fuel retailer or a wholesaler or if you're a contractor. And also, this is very important. And we're going to talk about this a couple of different times during the course. And this is what's referred to as your very important NAICS code, okay? This is your NAICS code. So for used motor vehicle dealers, you want to memorize this. It's very important that you know this number. It's 441-120, 441-120. So that makes sure no matter what, when you're collecting sales tax on the motor vehicles that you sell and you're easily uh, uh, transmitting it to the state, it goes into the proper fund. So remember, once again, Used motor vehicle dealers are going to use that code 441120. It's very important that you enter this code correctly, and that's scattered out through your manual as well. You're going to enter your owners or the officers of, say, for example, if you are an LLC, you're entering each person on the LLC here. And now what's kind of interesting, once you've gotten to this point now, you're going to create a username and password. So you're going to fill all this information out, and then towards the end, you're going to create a username and password like you have for any secure website. So it's going to, and the great thing about this is going to walk you through all this automated. You really can't make mistakes. You can't go on to the next part until you've completed the previous version. And they're going to give you a two factor authen, uh, uh, authentication. It's hard for me to say that. Authentication. I think I got it that time. Uh, so you can choose your authentication method, whether it's text, email, or both. And you can enter your information there. And then 
What you're going to be able to do next is basically print up your new, it's called your ST2 form. Okay, I want to repeat that. Once you get to this box right here, you're going to be able to easily complete it and where you print your confirmation and you're going to print up your very important form ST-2. This is sometimes referred to as your sales tax certificate. Okay, so that's going to show that you are legally able to collect sales tax on the motor vehicles that you sell. Okay, so keep that in mind. And by the way, you are going to submit a copy of your Form ST-2 with your dealer license application, and that's going to show the state that you are, in fact, legally able to collect sales tax. Okay, so, hey, I want you to be aware, if you have any questions regarding sales tax, uh, you can call the Department of Revenue Headquarters. That's going to be in Atlanta. But they do have a toll-free number. It's 877-423-6711. And you're going to find some really, really great sales tax information by calling that phone number. So even later on, once you have your license, or maybe you currently have your license, later on, you know, if you have any questions about the collection of sales tax, they are a phone call away. And normally they're going to answer that on the first or second ring because that's revenue for the state. Okay. And we'll talk, we'll go in depth later on in your course. I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, to collect. I, I call it sales tax, but it's actually the, the correct uh, term is tax ad valorem tax. Okay. So we'll talk about that, the ad valorem tax extensively later on. Now, I want to talk about registering your business with the Secretary of State. Most dealers must register the business name that you're operating with with the Georgia Secretary of State. The Georgia Secretary of State wants to have a record of every business which is operating in the state, including this dealership that you're going to be opening. I want you to be aware, however, sole proprietors and general partnerships are excluded. However, sole proprietorships and general partnerships must file paperwork with a superior clerk in any county they operate if they're using a name other than their proper name. So I want to show you how easy this is to do on the Georgia Secretary of State's Corporations Division website. Okay. And this website, it's ecorp.sos.ga.gov. And that's going to be scattered throughout your manual there. So the Secretary of State, you know, not only are they the state's leading election authority, but they have the Corporations Division, which is the leading recorder of business entities. So I want to show you how to do this. Okay. Uh, you can just jump right on to ecorp.sos.ga.gov. And the first thing you want to do is search business names because you can't use a name that's already been filed. You have to use your own unique uh, original name. So I want to show you how to do a quick business search of names. So for this example, let's say you want to call your dealership ABC Motors. So you can type in ABC Motors there and click search. And unfortunately, that's already taken. So you're going to see that there's an active one here and they are in compliance. So you cannot use ABC Motors. It's already taken. So you're going to have to choose a different business name. So let's say, for example, let's try XYZ Motors. Okay, let's say you want to operate as XYZ. And right now, look at that, no data is found. So that means that name is available. So you definitely need to make sure whatever dealership name you're using when you're registering with, with the Secretary of State is not being currently used by another business entity. So XYZ Motors at the time this video is being filmed can be used, okay? So now once you've decided on your name, you can do online services, okay? So you can jump on here and before you ever do this, I want you to be aware you're gonna to have to create a user account with the Georgia Secretary of State's office, okay? So it's just like any secure website that you've used. And you always want to make sure and store your username and passwords in a secure location so you can always use those. Even later on, years after your license, you can certainly jump right back onto these websites and always use the same usernames and passwords, okay? Now, once you've done this, look at this great online services page that you see right here. So when you've created a username and password, you can log on. You can do additional business searches. I'm going to show you how to create a business here in just a second. You can reserve your names. Later on, if you've made any type of changes to your business name, you must let the state know about that, okay? So you need to make sure that all your entity information is always on file with the state. Uh, you can reactivate. You can get e-notifications. And, and I strongly encourage you to click that link. So the state, Secretary of State will send you notifications when license renewals are due and, and uh, with the Secretary of State's office. So do please keep that in mind. So we're going to jump on here and we're going to go ahead and create or register a business. Okay. So first, 
Once again, you select your business entity there. So you collect the type of entity that you're registering and your re requested business name. You can put additional secondary names in there if you think that that one that you're not going to uh, um, uh, register. And you'll need to put your business entity category in the name as well when you're registering that. You know, maybe you're an LLC or maybe you're a corporation, okay? Now, once again, here's that here's that code. You're gonna need to remember this, okay? Our retail code is 44. Sometimes it's 44 four to 45, but always remember, remember your NAICS code for used motor vehicle dealers is going to be 441120. So not only did you have to have that number when you applied for your sales tax ID, but you also have that number when you are registering with the Secretary of State. And then you can see it right there on the screen. Always remember, used dealers, NAICS number is 441120, okay? So you'll put your email address in here. And also you can see at the top here exactly where you're at in the entire process. So you'll make sure and enter that information. And you will need to what we call create a registered agent, which is very easy to do. If you live in a state, you can act as your own registered agent. Or if you want to use a registered agent company, you can certainly do that. So uh, you'll just need to click that you certify that information is correct there. So you will need to have what's called a registered agent, and that can be you or a registered agent company. And all uh, uh, all those questions can be answered easily on the website. Now, I also want you to be aware, there's three ways to pay for your Secretary of State filing, okay? If you want just the regular process, uh, as you see there on screen, it costs $100, okay? That's just for the regular process. But if you click this drop down box right up here, you can actually expedite your filing process. If you want to do the two day, then as you see, it's a little more, it's $200 total. Or if you want to really get this in the Secretary of State system as fast as you possible, you can do same day. And as you see right there, that costs $350. So if you are if you want to expedite this process and get your name, your dealership name into the Secretary of State's database today, you can actually do that if you want to. And then it'll take you to the state secure payment portal where you can pay your information right there. And once you've completed this, once you pay for this, you're going to get your Secretary of State document that's going to look very similar to the one that you see on your screen right here. You definitely want to save this and print this. This is your Secretary of State document. And this is going to look similar whether you're a corporation, whether you're a limited liability company or an LLC, it's all going to look similar. So this is your official Secretary of State document. And you want to print this up. You could hang it on the wall if you want to, uh, but you want to save uh, copies of this as well. You know, for any information on registering your business, you can easily contact the Georgia Secretary of State Corporations Division via email, and it's corporationswebmail at sos.ga.gov, or you can call them directly, 404-656-2817. They're going to be a wealth of knowledge if you have any type of business entity questions. And once again, the Secretary of State's Corporations website is ecorp.sos.ga.gov. So you can certainly select your own business entity, or if you want to get legal advice to steer you in the right direction, you certainly can. Or you can certainly call the Georgia Secretary of State Corporations Division right there at that contact information. Now, another requirement is to either have what's called an occupational license or a business license, okay? Every dealer operating in the state of Georgia must have a local business license, which, which might be referred to as a business license or maybe an occupational license. And this is also a requirement when you order your dealer license plates. So you can contact your city hall, or maybe if you're in a non-corporated area, you can contact your county. Every city and county has different procedures for obtaining your local business license. But the local license shows the state of Georgia that you are legally able to operate in your city or your county. So I want to show you how to do this real quick here, but I want you to be advised this process is going to be a little bit different depending on the city that your dealership is located in, or if you're an area in an unincorporated area of the state, uh, which is not in a city, then you'll need that license from your local county. And so it can be either called a business license or an occupational license, depending on what city or county that you're located in. So first of all, you know, I know many of you, a, a large portion of the persons taking this course are opening a dealership in the city's largest state of Atlanta. So if you are opening a dealership in Atlanta, I'm going to show you the process of obtaining an Atlanta business license. Now, if you're located outside the city limits of Atlanta, you might want to go ahead and fast forward through this video to the portion that shows you how to obtain your license outside of Atlanta, because this is a little more extensive and is directed mainly 
at any person that's opening a dealership in the city of Atlanta. So if you're not in Atlanta, go ahead and fast forward to where you see the county information. But if you are in the city of Atlanta, I wanna show you exactly how to obtain your Atlanta business license with the city of Atlanta. So, you know, you might go to your favorite search engine, which is mine is Google, and you can type in Atlanta business license. And here you're gonna see a direct link that's gonna get you started. And once you click on that link, you're gonna see the city of Atlanta's website. And one of the first things I want you to show here, I wanna show you here is to check the zoning of the location that you wanna use as your dealership. So remember, as I stated earlier, the state of Georgia requires your building and lot meet all local zoning requirements. So I'm gonna show you how to check the zoning of a location that you wanna operate your dealership. So to check zoning of your dealership, you can click the big blue check zoning button. Then you'll click on the red check my zoning button and then you'll need to enter vehicle sales in the search box click search and then you're going to see the text that says vehicle sales and rental then at the bottom right you're just going to click the next button there and now you're going to enter the address of the location in the city of atlanta that you would like to operate your dealership and you will easily be able to find that location and see find if it's zoned for the operation of a dealership so here is an address on capitol place southwest and as you can see, this specific address is zoned for a dealership and it says permitted in the green box and you would be able to operate a dealership at that specific address. Hey, great, that's great, okay? Now here, you're gonna see an address that says subject to review. So let's say for example, you're on Capitol Avenue Southeast, it's subject to review. So you would possibly have to make sure that a dealership can be located at that location. Next, I entered the address of our office, which is in Midtown, okay? And this is the office of the Automobile Dealer Training Association in Midtown. And as you see here, the city of Atlanta prohibits the operation of a dealership at this specific location. So, and there's and there's no dealerships around our office. It's not zoned correctly for dealerships. So you would be prohibited from operating a dealership in this location because it's not zoned correctly. It is very, very important for you to check the zoning on a location that you want to operate because, you know, like I said, I've talked to numerous, numerous persons that, that purchase a building or lease a building only to find out, say, for example, the city of Atlanta will not allow a dealership at that location. So I certainly do not want this to happen to you. So you want to check your zoning before purchasing real estate or leasing property for your new business. No matter what I've even just showed you here and looked up zoning, I'm gonna recommend that you contact the Atlanta Zoning Division directly to ensure that you are able to use your chosen location. Now, with that being said, if you have any questions about zoning in the city of Atlanta, you can contact the Atlanta Zoning Divi uh, Enforcement Division and their phone number is 404-865-8550. Or you can email, it's permitissuance-oob at atlantaga.gov. So that's how you can easily check your zoning. Once you have determined the location you are using for zoning, I'm sorry, once you have determined the location you are using is zoned correctly, then you're going to jump right back on here and you're going to apply for a business license. So down there in a the small blue link there, you're going to click on apply for a business license. Now, before we move on, here's some of the documents that you're going to need to gather up before you apply for your Atlanta business license. And I'll show you these here in just a moment. So you need to have your business tax application, your notarized save affidavit, your e-verify affidavits, which we'll talk about here in just a second, a copy of your government issued photograph ID, a $75 check made to the city of Atlanta, and also a 70, I'm sorry, a $50 check made to the zoning review made pay, payable for the city of Atlanta. And I'll show you here uh, in just a moment, those as well. So here you see your Atlanta business license application. This is the official Atlanta business license application. So you definitely want to uh, download this and I'll show you how to do this here in just a moment. So you need to complete this. Uh, you're also going to need to complete your Atlanta new business tax application that shows here. Now you're not really collecting uh, taxes for the city of Atlanta. This, you know, you're basically collecting uh, taxes for the state of Georgia, uh, but this just shows basically that you are legally able to collect sales tax at your Atlanta dealership, even though you are submitting those to the state. And I'll show you how easy that is to do with a few clicks of the mouse later on in the course. Now, this is what's known as your e-verify affidavit to determine the number of your employees. So, uh, and then finally, you're gonna have what's called your save affidavit, okay? 
And now I want you to be aware, you know, we have a link to all these forms for opening a dealership in the city of Atlanta. So if you are opening a city in Atlanta, you can go to georgiadealer.com and you know, maybe you're watching this video directly on the website, or maybe you're watching this video on YouTube or another website. Just remember to find the forms for your dealership, go to georgiadealer.com, then scroll down on any page and click on the Georgia Dealer Forms link. And if you're opening a dealership in the city of Atlanta, then they have a section just for Atlanta dealers right there. You can scroll down on the Georgia Dealer Forms page to view all the forms for Atlanta dealers only. So, you know, I hope, I hope you find this information very helpful. So once you've done that, you will need to either schedule an appointment to walk your application in. And that does take about one to one and a half hours, uh, which is the route you want to take for the quickest approval process. Or if you have a little more time, you can actually mail these documents to the city. Uh, but mailing in your Atlanta business license application does take anywhere from three to five weeks. So mailing the business license application does take a little bit longer. If you're mailing it, you can mail your paperwork to Atlanta Office of Revenue. Okay, that's new business license application, 55 Trinity Avenue Southwest, Suite 1350, obviously that's in Atlanta, 30303. This is also the address that you would use if you wanna walk in your application, but be advised if you walk in, you must arrive in the office before three o'clock p.m. on a business day. If you arrive after 3 p.m. on a business day, you will have to come back at a later date. If you have any questions, here's some great contact information for you. If you are going to be a licensed dealer and you need a business license in the city of Atlanta, it's 404-330-6270, or you can email newbiz at atlanta.gov. Now, if you are outside the city of Atlanta, I want to show you the general procedure for obtaining your local business license, or sometimes they'll call that an occupational license. So let's just say for this training scenario, let's say you're obtaining a business license with the city of Augusta. You can enter Augusta, Georgia business license in your favorite search engine. And you're gonna see for this example, we have a direct link to the Augusta licensing webpage. And here you can see uh, that you can click on the business tax returns for new businesses that are obtaining an Augusta city business license. Now, whatever city you're located in, the process should be very similar, but the websites are gonna look a little bit different. Now, if you're opening your dealership outside of any city limits, otherwise, if you're opening your dealership in an unincorporated area, you're going to need a, need a business license from the county that your dealership will be located in. So for this example, let's say you're opening your dealership in Peach County. You could enter Peach County business license in the search engine. And here you're going to see business licensing information for Peach County. So Obtaining a business license in your local city or county is a dealer license re requirement, so you will need to complete this step before you apply for your dealer's license with the state and with the board, and you'll need to enclose a copy of your local business license when you're applying for your dealer's license. And by the way, I want to remind you, we have several checklists at the end of the course in your manual that will show you exactly what documents you will enclose in your dealer license application envelope for quicker license approval. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next. I want to talk about your required fingerprint-based background check. I want you to be aware that here very soon, when you become a licensed dealer in the state of Georgia, you're going to have complete oversight over some very large financial transactions. Since most of the vehicles you sell that are going to be worth several thousands of dollars, you know these are very large financial transactions that the state of Georgia is giving you complete oversight over. So. You know, many times it's just going to be you and a customer that's completing a transaction. So before the state of Georgia and the board, <clears throat> excuse me, gives you complete oversight over these very large financial transactions, they want to make sure that you're of a high level of ethical standards. You know, the state of Georgia basically requires dealers to be of a higher level of ethical standards than the average person that's walking down the street. And they also want to make sure they're not issuing a dealer's license to, to someone that stole a car they don't want to give a dealer's license to somebody with the rolled back odometers. You know, the last thing the state wants to do is issue a dealer's license to somebody that was running some big auto theft ring. You know, so so to ensure that you are a high of a high level of ethical standards, you must complete a fingerprint based background check with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations or the GBI. Now, this is for Georgia residents only. If you live in another state and you're opening a dealership in Georgia, then you'll need to obtain fingerprint cards and have your fingerprints taken in your home state. But if you live in Georgia, I want to show you how easy it is to complete 
this required step. The fingerprint background check is conducted by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Uh, and it's through the Georgia Applicant Processing Service, which sometimes we call GAPS. You can pre-register online or via phone at 888-439-2515. You must have a dealer application on file with the board before your actual fingerprints are taken. I want to repeat that very important statement. You must have your dealer application on file with the board before you actually have your fingerprints taken. So chronologically, you'll need to register for your fingerprints, submit your dealer license application. When the board has received your dealer application, you will then receive an email directing you to report to your chosen fingerprint location to actually be fingerprinted. So here's some information that you're going to find in your dealer manual at the training course, okay? Uh, if you need this information, you're going to make sure that you have your ORI number field should be GA922400Z. Z. Did you get that? If you need a verification code, it's going to be 922400Z. Uh, the reason for printing will be for a used motor vehicle dealer license. If you're a Georgia resident, you do not check the fingerprint card user. If you are not a Georgia resident, you will check the fingerprint card user box and submit fingerprint cards as required. So first, you will need to register for your fingerprints. And you can do that at the website. It's www.aps.jamalto.com. And here you can see the GAPS website. That's the GAPS, which stands for Georgia Applicant Processing Services. So to get started, you're going to need to choose the location that you would like to have your fingerprints taken. So just click on the blue Locate button, and you'll see a map of all the locations all over the state where you can have your fingerprints taken. So you will need to select your chosen fingerprint location. Then you will need to register for your fingerprints. And I want to show you how easy this is to do. You'll need to click on the Secretary of State or the SOS button once you've gotten on here. It's very important, okay? Once you've gotten on the screen, you need to select the Secretary of State or SOS button. And then you're going to scroll down towards the bottom of the page and you're going to, going to click on the button that says Used Motor Vehicle Dealer License. You will need to read and hopefully accept the terms of and conditions and then click continue. Next, be sure the reviewing agency ID reads GA922400Z. 922 and if necessary, you can enter 922400Z as your verification code and all that's included in your manual. Uh, so do please keep that in mind. So you'll enter your personal information. Then you'll enter your home address and a separate mailing address if needed. Then you'll need to verify that information. And then in just a couple of moments, you'll be taken to your secure payment page where you can enter your payment information. And as you see on this screen, you're going to be charged at the current time $51.50 to register for your fingerprint background check. And remember, you need to do this. You need to register for your fingerprints before you submit your dealer license application. So I want to remind you, of the correct chronological steps for the fingerprinting process. You must pre-register for your fingerprints. Then when you've completed all the other licensing steps, you will apply for your dealer's license. When your dealer license is received by the board, you will receive an email notification from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation or the GAPS website to report to your chosen fingerprint location to actually have your fingerprints taken at that time. So you register, you apply for your license, you're notified to report to the fingerprint location after the board has received your application. You know, for questions about the fingerprint background check, you can call 888-439-2512. And remember, all these contact phone numbers and contact information are in the manual from your class. Next, the state of Georgia requires persons obtaining a dealer license for the very first time to sit through the mandated four-hour dealer pre-license class. So, you know, it's kind of like if you want to get a real estate license, that can be very profitable. So the state requires you take training before you can obtain your real estate license. If you want to obtain an insurance license, that can be very profitable. So the state requires you take training before you can obtain an insurance license. You know, a dealer's license can be very profitable. So the state of Georgia requires you sit through a four-hour dealer pre-license course. You're going to submit your certificate of completion that you receive at the end of the course with your dealer's license application. And this will show the state that you have completed your mandated training and you'll be qualified to apply 
for a used motor vehicle dealer's license. The certificate of completion you received at the end of the course is good for exactly one year. So you wanna make sure you complete all the pre-licensing steps and submit your dealer license application within one year of the date of your dealer training course. Otherwise, state law will require that you take the entire training course all over again. As a reminder, the state does also require you to take online training or, or your uh, continuing education every two years before you can renew your license. That training can be taken online, okay? But at the current time, uh, the state of Georgia does require you take your pre-licensed class in class with an instructor, okay? So one of the final steps is going to be your lot inspection. After you submit your dealer license application, you're going to be contacted for your mandatory lot inspection. The lot inspection ensures that you've met the minimum requirements to obtain a dealer's license. So a preliminary inspection will be conducted prior to the issuance of the dealer license by the board. Do not submit your dealer application until your business building and all your facilities are ready for inspection. A failed inspection will delay the review of your application until all the deficiencies are satisfied. So once again, here's that information for you. Georgia law requires all dealer licenses, sales tax licenses, and local business licenses are displayed prominent, prominently at the business location. So like I said, I'm going to give you several reminders through the course. You have to display your licenses. So you're going to work hard for those licenses. You're going to be proud for those of those licenses when you get them. Uh, so make sure and display your licenses prominently. This is a state law for every dealer.